morning, folks. Welcome to Faith Baptist Church. So good to see you out this morning. This is an exciting day. This is a good day. We're going to have just a great time together. Go sing some songs about the Lord. Uh, you missed uh, Jenny Switzer and John Wade here. Jenny Switzer Wade, excuse me, and John Wade here talking this morning about uh, their times in uh, uh, Africa and all. And, and also, Jenny was mentioning about trusting in the Lord no matter what the situation. So take your hymnals if you would and turn to page 130. We're going to sing some songs about assurance in the Lord. 130, yesterday, today, forever. Stand together with me. Sing it out. Oh, how sweet the glorious message simple faith may claim. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. Still he loves to save the sinful, heal the sick and lame. Cheer the mourner, still the tempest, glory to his name. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name. Glory to his name, glory to his name. All may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name. Page 130 on the second. He who pardoned erring Peter never needs the fear. He that came to faithless Thomas, all thy doubt will clear. He who let the loved disciple on his bosom rest, bids thee still with love as tender lean upon his breast. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. All may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name. He who made the raging billows walked upon the sea. Still can hush our wildest tempest as on Galilee. He who wept and prayed in anguish in Gethsemane drinks with us each cup of trembling in our agony. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. All may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name. On the last, as of old, he walked to Maus with them to abide. So through all life's way he walketh ever near our side. Soon again shall we behold him, hasten, Lord, the day. But will do be this same Jesus as he went away. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name all may change but Jesus never glory to his name would you pray with me this morning Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for the opportunity to be here we thank you for the privilege of being here Lord we thank you for the privilege of coming to the throne of grace, Lord. You've told us to come boldly to the throne of grace. We uh, count that a privilege, Father. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, 
We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you, Father, for providing our salvation, Lord, through the blood of your Son. We pray, Father, that you would just speak to us through the service today, speak to us through the music, speak to us through the word that is spoken, Lord. Pray the Holy Spirit would do his work in our heart. We pray, Father, that you just uh, guide the speaker and uh, just let every word come out of his mouth, be empowered with the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that we might just be uh, different when we walk out of here, Lord, that we might be challenged to serve you better, that Christians would be encouraged and strengthened, that if anyone here doesn't know Christ as a Savior, today would be their day of salvation, Lord. We ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you take a minute and greet each other? Find your seats again and your hymnals. Turn to page 139. 139, I know whom I have believed. 139 in your hymnals. Que 
keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Thank you. you may be seated. All right, good morning. We've got a couple of birthdays this morning. Uh, April Mini. I don't know if these are this week or last week because I'm a little bit behind. We have Tony. Oh, we have the third. Okay, this was the third. This is really late. Come on, April. Come on up. And then uh, Bob Walker. Of course, today we had, in Sunday school, had a missionary, uh, Jenny Wade, formerly Switzer. Many of you know her. Uh, Rex Switzer, years ago, worked for, how many years did you guys? We've done her since 1979. Okay, 76. I remember, that's not the year the Red Sox went to the World Series, 76, that's right. See how, tell them I'm a sportsman, but uh, 76, and... Uh, I can remember them. I can remember hearing about them, and uh, because I came, I was saved in uh, '83 and went to school in Boston. Worked in a church in Rhode Island. We did camps with Faith, and I, as the first year I came, one was the year that Rex had left to the field and or deputation. And they always always just talk, to talk about how Rex would run a summer camp, and I never knew because I never saw it. I just heard about it. And so we did the best I we could. So Jenny's going to come give a little testimony. She's coming off the field uh, after years of faithful service. Uh, they were South Africa and Ethiopia. And so she's going to give a little update of what they're doing and continue to pray for them. Thank you, Pastor. It's good to be here today. And as he said, we came in 1976 to Enfield, Connecticut from Oklahoma. What a culture shock. <laughs> but uh, that was that's funny now. But <clears throat> anyway... Uh, then I went to Ethio uh, South Africa in uh, 80, uh, and, um, whatever it was, 89, yeah. And uh, so it's been a wonderful journey, and uh, this church has stood behind us all these years. And if you missed Sunday school, I'm very sorry because uh, we ha I showed the DVD with all of the ministry in a capsule. But thank you for your support all these years, and um, uh, God has been good. And we are praying that uh, the church is going to go forward, and God is going to do great things with you. Uh, if you didn't get a prayer card, please pick up one from me. It has my phone number and email, and I'll be happy to contact and be in contact with anybody that chooses to email me. Thank you. Good morning, if you would all stand with us as we worship the Lord again this morning. We want to sing our first song, song Cornerstone.
You may be seated. We come again this morning to the book of Ruth. And uh, take your Bibles to Ruth chapter 3 this morning. Ruth chapter 3. And it really, this series, uh, as we've come through, we kind of have looked at the four characters, Elimelech, uh, Naomi, Ruth, and now today, Boaz. And it couldn't have fit more perfect for the baptism this morning because we've talked about the story of Ruth and how it is a story of love, but also a story of God's grace, how God's grace turns a situation around 
and that, that no life is worthless or broken that God can't fix. And today we want to see how God does that. But as we saw Naomi and her husband follow her husband to the land of Moab, and she went there, and they were going there for a little while. They left the land of the house and bread and went to God's wash pot, as it says in the Psalms about Moab. And as they went down there, uh, <clears throat> Naomi lost her two sons and her husband. And one day she heard that God had visited Bethlehem, Judea, her homeland, and she rose up. We talked about that, how she rose up when she heard the message, followed God, said, I'm going back to the land. And she had her two daughter-in-laws, and her, the first one, Ophrah, turned back. But Ruth was determined not to go back to her land. She wanted to go with Naomi back to Israel. Remember, she said, my God will be your God. Your God, my God, your people, my people. Nothing uh, depart from us or separate us except for death. And remember, she hung on to, clung on to Naomi to go back with her. And, and we've been talking about this, how that our mindset is different. We can't understand. It's hard for us to understand this biblical context because our day is so different. But in those days, we didn't have women's rights and women voting and jobs for women. And her existence depended upon her marital status and her family status. And because she had lost her family status, Naomi told her, go back to your people because there you'll have some hope, financial support. If you come back with me, you'll have nothing but uh, a life really of poverty and an uncertain existence. And also going back in Israel, you'll be an outcast. And we see that Ruth didn't play the victim. In fact, I don't know in their day they even had a victim mentality. Uh, we have a victim mentality today, and it's hard for me, I guess, after living in Romania 22 years, and I hear some of the things people uh, cry about, it gets me very uh, aggravated. But besides that, in their day, they didn't quite understand uh, what it meant. And she went, came back with Naomi into the land. Remember we said last week, God had a program for poverty, and that was when they harvested the fields... They were, supposed to, they were only supposed to harvest it once. They weren't supposed to go through it again. And so they left it for the poor, and they were supposed to leave the edges of the field. So Ruth got up. She rose up and said, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to do what I can, and I'm going to go out and gather food for my family and for Naomi. And she did that. And the Bible says it just happened that she went to the field of Boaz. And we saw and we learned last week that if you want to know, know God's will, do God's will. Because it's here, it's written, it's pretty clear. It's not that hard to understand. And if we'll be doing God's will, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If we'll be doing God's will as it's written, God will guard our steps in the right direction. And that happened with, with Ruth. She went. And she followed uh, what she knew to do. And God just brought her to this place, to Boaz Fields. Now, Boaz was kindred, was a relative, if you will, of Naomi. And so that's very important because that really, we've been talking about Ruth and the love story part and also the, the grace part. But today we're going to see how that happens, what that really means, because Boaz actually is her, the ter term is kingsman redeemer. In other words, she's, he's a relative, but he also has the power to redeem her, buy back the inheritance, and so that Naomi and Ruth would have an inheritance. And really, that illustration, you know what it illustrates today? It illustrates our salvation. The Bible says in Titus, who gave himself for us that he might what? Redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a pe peculiar people, zealous of good works. It really, this passage, and what we're going to look at with Boaz, Boaz represents Christ, and what Christ did for us, and what that means, what salvation 
means. We hear about salvation. We hear about being saved. We hear about born again. Uh, John's here to be baptized as a testimony to that he's been saved, not to make him more saved or less saved. But we see in this story of Ruth a tremendous picture of redemption and what that means and how that happens. And now we see, first of all, Ruth's plight and her need. And Naomi said to her, she's going out there and she went to this field and Naomi said to her, my daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? When she found out that Boaz was a redeemer, Naomi said, you need to go and seek out Boaz to redeem you. And now think about this, that the modern day Ruth would be repulsed by this idea. It would be like, no, I don't need anybody to redeem me. I can redeem myself. And that's kind of how our attitude is today. The true materialistic attitude today that we have and our independent attitude is I can pull myself up by my bootstraps I can resolve my own problems. I'll go get a job. I'll work harder. I'll go back to school. I don't need anybody to redeem me. I can do it myself. And you may be able to, of your own power, better your life. But when it comes to salvation, when it comes to your standing before God, there's nothing you can do except, except Christ. And so, you, you know, today, think about this. As we have this attitude and this like, why do I need... If people understood their need today, they would be running to the church. And they said, oh, wait, we don't need God. We don't believe in God. After death, there will be no more atheist. The moment you die, anybody who's an atheist, the moment they die, they will no longer be an atheist. It, and it won't be a, a good meeting or reckoning. And for us, if we live like atheists, when we see Christ and His glory and His power, it should motivate us to serve Him with all our heart. And so Ruth was not a modern-day woman. She understood her need for a Redeemer. The Bible says we are born in sin. In other words, we're born, when we're born, and this is really one of the basic problems with our modern society and why we have the policies we have. We think that all men are good, and if we would just change this situation, they would become better. The Bible says man is basically bad, and unless God changes his nature, he will not do good. The Bible says all of sin comes short of God's glory. The Bible says there's not one person upon the earth that does good and does not sin. Now, you may think you're good compared to other people, but every time in the Bible... When somebody met God, they didn't say, hey, Jesus, good to see you, and slap his hands. They were down on their knees, bowing their head in fear and trembling when they saw who God was in his glory and his power and his light. And so today we don't see our need for a Savior and see our need for redemption. The Bible says in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Think about the glory of Christ, the power of Christ. When we look at Christ, we can look around and say, I'm better than that one, and I'm better than that one, and I'm sure better than any political candidates. But when we look at God's standard, we'd have to all recognize as Isaiah did when he saw Christ, 
Woe is me. I'm a person of unclean lips. And so the plight of Ruth, she needed a redeemer. And the truth of the matter is every person needs a redeemer. And then notice Ruth sought out Boaz. We talked about this last week. Naomi said, found out that this was a relative, and she listened to Naomi. Naomi said, go and, and seek out Boaz. And uh, verse 8, it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid, and he turned himself. Behold, a woman lay at his feet. Ruth went to Boaz after the harvest to ask him to redeem her. Okay? She had to ask him. Now, think about this this morning. Jesus died for the world. Okay? He died for everybody. And he, is, he has revealed himself to everybody. But not everybody wants to accept that revelation. Do you know why? Because we don't like light. Do we? The Bible says, Jesus said this, and this is the judgment that light is coming in the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light. Why? Because their works or their deeds were what? Evil. Why is it? You can be in a conversation with somebody. You can talk about the weather. You can talk about the Red Sox or the Yankees, whatever you talk about, anything. But as soon as you mention Jesus, it's like you threw up on him. Why is that? Why can't we talk religion or Christianity in a common way? Because there's something there. There's a light that shines. And when that light shines, what does it do? It reveals things. You ever do a close-up? You take a picture, a digital camera, and from a distance, and then you, you, you enlarge it, X. 500, then you see all those blemishes, and oh, man, I didn't get that, and you see it. And so the light reveals what is wrong. And so she came, and she came to Boaz, seeking him out. Verse 9, and he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread forth thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kingsman. In other words, she was asking him to redeem her. Listen, God is talking to you. God is speaking to you. You can hear the gospel. You can even believe it with your head. But there has to come in a moment, the Bible says, who will confess with his mouth. There's a time that you have to ask God to save you. You have to seek God out. And she went and sought God out. You're not saved just because of what family you're born into. You're not saved just because you went to church. You're saved when you have a moment and come to Jesus. And realize you're a sinner and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. You died for me. Forgive me my sins. Change my life. I want to follow you. And she had this moment, she said she was ready to ask. But notice that Boaz knew about her. He knew all about her, didn't he? And as we looked in verse chapter 2, and as we see here in chapter 3, he says, it's been told about me. He was there in his field. He was in his field. Notice he was in his field, and he was watching. You know God this morning knows, he sees you. God is not in the cosmos somewhere. He's not out there in outer space somewhere, uh, hidden in a, in a black hole somewhere. We think God is somewhere. No, God is right here. God is present. God, He knows your favorite ice cream flavor. He knows what frustrated you or who frustrated you yesterday. He knows your name. He knows your hang-ups. He knows what you do on your computer. He knows everything 
about you. And he's watching. And he's not watching. See, Jesus came, the Bible says Jesus came to what? Save the world. He's not watching for you to get out of line so he can slap you. He's watching for you to acknowledge him and say, help me, Lord. He's there. And so Boaz was there. He was watching. Who's this woman? She came to my field. Then he found out all about her, knew all about her. And as he's there, she comes and she's asking Boaz to be her redeemer. God was watching. Boaz was watching. Listen this morning. God's not as a distance. He's involved in your life. life, And the things that happen in your life are not an accident. We're not here by chance. We're not here because we're evolving further and further. No, God has a design and a plan. He knows you. He knows all about you. And He's there ready and willing. Anytime you call upon Him, He's there. So Boaz was watching. Then notice something else. Boaz was qualified. Notice he says, and Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be the Lord who hath not left of his kindness of the living and the dead. And Naomi said to her, This man is near of what kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. So it was a law in Israel that if the husband, if a man died, his brother or uncle, somebody could marry the widow and buy back the inheritance. Because the inheritance the Jewish people is very important. If you remember in, uh, in Kings, when Ahab took Naboth's field, and he wanted to buy it, but Naboth said, no, I cannot sell God's inheritance. And so every family received an inheritance that they were not to sell. And because of the circumstances that happened, and Amalek dying, and no, nobody to take his place, the sons died. There was a provision in the law to get back the inheritance. You know, that's really what salvation is. God created you. You're created in His image. The problem is, because of sin, we've gone away from God, but God's provided a provision for us to come back to Him. If you will, He wants to buy you back through what Jesus did. And so Boaz had to be qualified. And this morning, Jesus Christ is qualified. Paul said this concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in Romans 1.3, which was made, what, of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be, what, the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by, what, the resurrection from the dead. Why is Jesus qualified? Well, he was the seed the line of the Messiah. And he came and declared with his life who he was, living a sinless life 33 years on this earth. But he totally proved it. After he was crucified three days later, he rose again and lives forever today. Lives in our lives. He's not a dead Savior. He's a living Savior who lives today. So we don't serve somebody that's died. We don't, Jesus isn't somebody that tells us the way to God. Jesus is the way to God. So as Boaz was qualified, Jesus is qualified. But notice the next thing, Boaz was willing. He said this, Stay this night, and the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a close relative for you, good, let him do it. But if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you. As the Lord lives, lie down until the morning. You know, the Bible, you know what God says? He doesn't cast anyone away that comes to him. In other words, God doesn't, anybody that comes to Jesus, God doesn't reject. God doesn't say, well, no, you're too, uh, you're too, you're not smart enough, or you're not the right, uh, you're not the right nationality. Or you're just uh, uh, too ugly. He doesn't say that. 
He says, you come to Jesus. He'll receive you. He receives everybody. And so Boaz was willing. Listen, God, God is willing to do a lot of things in your life if you'll just let him. The, the only person that limits God is you. Remember Jesus when he went back to his hometown? And what did he say there? He went to his hometown, and it says in the Bible that he couldn't do any miracles there. Why? Because of their unbelief. He wanted to do miracles there. He couldn't because they wouldn't trust him. You can trust Jesus this morning. You can trust that his word is true and that he is not distant. He's near and he wants to work in your life this morning. And so Boaz was willing. And then Boaz paid the price. Now there was another closer relative. And so they had to go to the closer relative in chapter 4 and they had a discussion there. And the closer relative was going to redeem him. When he found out he had to marry Ruth, he said, no, I can't ruin my inheritance. And so Boaz said, I'll do it. He declared before the elders and they had this uh, thing, this ritual there. And uh, he says in verse 9, Boaz said unto the elders and to all the people, your witnesses this day that I have bought all that was in Limelech's. In other words, I am willing to pay the price. Now here is the thing, the principle we don't understand. We think that God should just randomly forgive our sins. But He can't. Why? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. In other words, when we sin, we have to pay. Right? We have to pay. And you can say, well, just forgive me. And He wants to forgive you, but the price has to be paid. Now, Boaz paid the price for that inheritance. And that shows how Jesus paid the price for us. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. In other words, on the cross, Jesus did not go to the cross because it was an accident. He didn't go to the cross because of the Jews. He didn't go to the cross because of the Romans. He sat there on the cross and he said, I can call 10,000 legions of angels down to, to bail me out. But he said, no. He said in John 10, what did he say? The good shepherd, I lay my da life down willingly. Why? Because he wanted to pay the price to buy us back. See, we say salvation is free. And in a way, it is free for us because Jesus paid for it. Salvation is very expensive, if you will, because it costs God His only Son. So salvation, in a way, it isn't free because it's been paid for by Jesus on the cross. But it's free for us if we're willing to accept Christ and willing to believe what He has done for us. And so, he took her, verse 10, moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Mahlon, I have purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. Verse 11, all the people that were in the gate and the eldest said, we are witnesses, the Lord make the woman that has come to thine house like Rachel and like Leah. And then verse 12, <coughs> excuse me, verse 13, so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. Now, notice this. 
the result was a new relationship. The result was a new relationship. Now think about this. This is why we can't work for our salvation. We cannot work for our, because works do not produce a new relationship. When we come to Christ, the Bible talks about being born again, born of above, born of God. So we're talking about a, a transformation. And Paul talks about how the Spirit comes in and lives in our heart. He that has Christ and has the Spirit of God. And so the result of our being redeemed is what? It is a new relationship. And the church is known as what? The bride of Christ. And so we come to Christ when we come to Christ. And that's what baptism represents. Right? We're buried with Him. And then we're raised to what? Bible says, newness of life, Romans 6.6. 6. What's that newness of life? It's that time when we accept Christ. When we believe on Him. When we trust Him to save us. And He changes our lives. I can remember I was 17. Listening to the radio. And <clears throat> under conviction, even believing, until that Friday, I remember it was a Friday night, I got down on my knees next to my bed. I said, God, save me. I'm a sinner. I believe in you. And God changed my life. The next Sunday, I was in a church. Why? Because the result of salvation is a new life. It's a new relationship with God. We're now declared to be what? The sons of God. Boaz bought Ruth back and now their husband and wife, they become one. It's a new relationship. That's why, like I said, works cannot save because works can never produce a new relationship. That new relationship is in Jesus Christ. And it says here, and so Booth, Boaz took Ruth, she was a wife, and we went into unto her, the Lord gave her conception, she bare a son, and notice what it says, and the woman said unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Down to verse uh, 17, and the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, there is born, there is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. And remember, we said Jesus was of the seed of David, and that is the awesomeness of the book of Ruth, that God could take an unknown woman from an undesirable land, from an undesirable people. <clears throat> she took this woman out, brought her back to him, and she is in the lineage of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And that's why I say Ruth is a story of gr God's grace, how God's grace can take any life and change it around. And how it is never, you never, with God, you never say it's too late. With God, you never say I'm a victim. With God, you never say things can't be better. They can if we would turn our hearts and our minds to Him. But it starts with asking Him, believing in Him. And trust in Him this morning. Have you been redeemed? The Bible says in Revelations 5, 9, 5, 9, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for you were slain, and you redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of what? Every kindred and tongue and people 
a nation. See, God, that's what God's doing. He's looking in the harvest field. He's looking around. He's seeing every one of you. And He wants to take you out and establish a new relationship with Him. Are you willing this morning to believe in Christ and let Him pay the price for your sins so that you can be redeemed? Let's stand together this morning. God's spoken to your heart. Maybe you just need to come and pray and give thanks to God for this new song. Maybe this morning you need to come and say, am I saved? Do I know Christ? Have you been redeemed? Are you trying to do it in your own strength, through your own works? You can't. It is through Jesus Christ. You come this morning if God spoke to your heart.
be seated and uh, I'd like my family to come out front if we could get the kids in here somebody have the junior church come in I don't know if they're here uh, we want to have John come up come on up John and uh, we want to uh, kind of do two things and not usually when we baptize somebody we receive them into membership and so John's going to be received into membership of the church and my family, all my family come up here because uh, Brother Tholen is, uh, and Rebecca too. And uh, we want to present ourselves for membership because we've never done that officially. Uh, <laughs> Brother Tholen has been on us, and every time we get ready to do that, we're, we, don't, we can never find all the family at one time. And uh, we're still finding some of them. Is there's my wife's in with the junior church and Julia too is there I guess. Anyways, we're excited to have John today uh, to follow the Lord and believers' baptism, and uh, he's accepted Christ and wants to publicly. You know, baptism is a public declaration of like I explained this morning of what God does in our heart, God does in our life, and He transforms us, changes us, and now as we become new Christians, doesn't mean we're perfect. We grow, the Bible says we grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is a process of growth, what God does in our lives. We're not perfect. We're perfectly saved, but we're not perfect people. And uh, as we gather together in the church, we have many opportunities to demonstrate God's grace. Amen? as we grow together and learn to work together. And so all members who are in favor receive in this family, and John, as members of, of Faith Baptist Church, let it be known with a hearty amen. 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 All right. Brother Tholen, you come. We're going to get ready for the baptism. All right. It's a joy to receive all these folks into membership. Um, Obviously, the Santinos have been with us for some time, but um, Elizabeth was in England until just recently, so we waited for her to come back. And then it became a challenge just getting all eight of them here in the auditorium at the, at the same time. Uh, John is uh, coming by baptism, and Julia and Josiah, um, uh, their membership is pending baptism, which will be coming next month, as I understand it. Oh, July now. Okay. We're waiting for some relatives, I believe, to be able to be on hand. All right. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Lauren. Lauren, yes. Lauren and Josiah. All right. Uh, if we could, let's have the ushers forward, please, and we'll receive our offering this morning. Just a couple of reminders. We, uh, it's a good crowd this morning. We're glad you're here. A special welcome to our visitors. We trust that you're all staying for the luncheon to follow uh, shortly after the end of the service downstairs. Good time of food and fellowship. Please stay, and uh, we'll be happy to see you all down there. Reminder that there's no service tonight. Um, and let's see. Oh, Tuesday, we've got the seniors' luncheon coming at noon, and we trust that uh, we've been having a good time at those luncheons. This will be the third one, so we trust that all our seniors will join us. Next Sunday uh, is part of Memorial Day weekend, and we invite you to join us for services, and especially, um, it's gonna be a special time. We want to honor our military, so if you have served in the military or you have uh, family members or friends that have served, please bring them along because we wanna uh, pay a special uh, moment of honor to them. All right, may the Lord bless you as you give. Um, our, our uh, missions offering especially, we pray that you would uh, continue to uh, prayerfully consider that. We continue to make our, our goal 
every week, which is $1,925, and it's a joy to be able to support as many missionaries as we have, and it's certainly been our pleasure to support uh, the Switzers in South Africa, Ethiopia, and the, and the South Sudan, and then uh, most of our members know that uh, just January we took on Jonathan and Katie Switzer for support, and they'll be heading to South Africa later this year. So may the Lord bless you as you give. Brother Cleveland, would you please word our prayer? Remember, next week we're going to have a special service for all veterans. In fact, if you want to wear your uniform next Sunday, uh, that would be fine. And so we're going to have a special service honoring all our veterans. We're excited about that. And uh, you ready to eat? Yeah. All right. Everybody stick around. We have plenty of food downstairs. We're going to have a time of fellowship. And no hurry. If you want to go play volleyball, basketball, whatever, we're going to hang around for as long as you want. There'll be no service tonight. All right. Brother Ed. 246 in your hymnal. Redeem.
uh, your word. Lord, we thank you for the challenges that your Holy Spirit brings to our hearts. And we pray that all these might work together to cause us to be the people you saved us to be. Lord, we ask that uh, you'd, you'd uh, bless as we go from here. Lord, as we you get ready to enjoy dinner together, Lord, we have a time of fellowship. In all these things, Lord, we want you to be honored and glorified. And we all to you. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.